I'm Dr. Marwan Sabah, a neurologist, the director of translation research at the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health in Las Vegas, Nevada, and spend the entirety of my time and career taking care of people with Alzheimer's and other dementias and doing research. Why do we want a early diagnosis? And you see the kind of the spectrum here. And the answer is, in a transformative moment, as we've talked about now time and again, we know that uh, patients uh, in the beginning of the disease, the mildest symptoms, mild cognitive impairment, mild AD dementia, are the ones that are most likely to get benefit from monoclonal antibodies. And this is really important because <clears throat> over time, we're likely to see the use of the monoclonal antibodies in the front end of the disease, not the back end. I don't see uh, the monoclonal antibodies being used to treat end-stage Alzheimer's dementia or severe Alzheimer's dementia. I think you're gonna see it using on the front end. Now, when you actually look back on Alzheimer's as a disease of 10 years or more, we know that the last 20 to 30% of their life with Alzheimer's disease is spent in institutional-based care, uh, or his historically at the present. You know, the ideal scenario is that you detect them early, you have a biomarker incorporation, you have this multidisciplinary approach that you see on the slide with lots of teams and nurses and specialists, et cetera, treat them aggressively early, you know, potentially with the monoclonal antibody, with the idea that you retain their quality of life for longer periods of time so that they don't need institutional-based care at the back end. They, or you shrink the use of institutional-based care to 5% of their life as opposed to 25 or 30%. And that's the future that we are now starting to incorporate, is that you treat them aggressively on the front end, retain their quality of life. This is where I think we're at another transformative moment. We could make it into to a disease that is annoying for their forgetfulness, but not life-threatening as it is now. An early diagnosis is also important to patients and caregivers because patients want to know what's going on. Why am I this way? It's scary. And I have to tell you, I am a, spend a lot of my day job giving people bad news. It's, it's, it, I have to tell you, uh, speaking very personally, uh, it's exhausting uh, telling people they have a terminal brain disease. Uh, and then you have to take the time. You don't walk in the door and take five minutes to say, oh yeah, you have Alzheimer's and see you later. That's not how this goes. You gotta sit down, you gotta explain what's going on. You tell them what you're worried about. You tell them where this could go. You tell them what's going on. And I actually think that the biomarker tests, and I've been using them for years, helps to put the say, the aha moment. This is what it is. This is why, this is what we're gonna do about it. It helps you uh, uh, take the, ambiguity out of it, the vagueness out of it, helps you be more precise in creating a, a, a treatment plan, helps you talk about uh, setting up expectations, and tells people what to expect. And I, you know what I say in my practice, and it's funny because I will be seeing patients later on today, is that I want to be wrong. I tell every patient every time I see them, my goal is to be wrong. I don't want to be right here. I don't want my patients to have Alzheimer's. I don't want them to have mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's. I want to be wrong. I would love to say, oh, I was wrong. Good, good for you, because that's better for the patient than to say, yes, you have a terminal brain disease and you're going to get worse over time. So uh, it's important to spend the time. It's important to pin down the diagnosis with great precision, take out the ambiguity, take out the vagueness, set expectations, and, and define a plan. So... The problem is, uh, I believe that the monoclonal antibodies is going to make people go, oh my goodness gracious, I am scared I'm going to get Alzheimer's. What can I do about it? And I believe that's where uh, there will be demand, patient demand. And if you look, wait for the super experts, there's just so few of us. I don't think that's the way to go about it. And then, of course, then we need to be able to be more precise in the way we communicate this condition. And so uh, I think, again, you got to take the time. Again, it's not a five minute, oh, yeah. Uh, this is a migraine or, or you know, it, you can't do that. This is, this is serious stuff. So I actually block periods of time uh, and uh, we'll build it in and code it for it uh, and document the time taken to explain this disease so that they walk out the door, door understanding what they're dealing with, knowing what they're dealing with and, uh, uh, and helping set expectations.